This video is to cover the neurological system. So we're talking about things like involuntary movements, gait changes, that type of thing. Dr. Peterson, why don't you go ahead and get started to take us off? Yeah, so with the neurological sim symptoms, I think we get very focused on things like tics. Um, and I can say that out of all the symptoms, they're probably the least helpful um, and the one that we wanna talk about the most. Um, but there are certain things about them that can be unique or, or certain things that you can tell us that give us a lot of information about tics other than you know just describing what the tics are, which can be useful. Um, but I think in terms of describing ticks, it's better for us to get a short little video um, of a tick if you see it, whatever specific kind of involuntary movement, whether it's a wink or a blink or a facial grimace or a shoulder shrug. Um, any, any type of video of those things can give us probably a lot more than a description of them would give us. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, not all ticks are going to be usable. So hyper focusing in on ticks and involuntary movements is really not going to be the best use of your time most of the time. Your provider will let you know if they think that this specific tick is really useful and they want to get a lot of details, they'll let you know and they'll help guide you through that. So the reality is it's probably more beneficial to focus on the other videos as much as you might want to focus on this one because the ticks um, are in your face and they are stressful to see and we really want to make them go away. Um, so the reality is um, it's just not useful but because we don't have the specific ticks really well defined in the literature. Um, and so we have to just broadly look at ticks um, and then focus in more on the modalities that we've talked about before. So if you notice that ticks are only happening in a certain situation or certain circumstance, that's more useful. If you notice that if you can get them really hot and their ticks go away, that's really a useful thing. Um, if they're only happening at a certain time of day, then that's a lot more useful than the specific nature of the ticks. Um, it's also important to note that the nature of ticks themselves tend to fluctuate over time, um, both coming and going, and they can also evolve and change. So um, this is another reason why focusing in on the specific ticks is not always as useful as we might hope. Yeah, I think the next big part of the neurological system, and I think often overlooked, is gait changes. Um, you know, a lot of these kiddos will have some awkward gait, um, and a lot of times the video, again, very helpful because it's hard for mom to describe what that awkwardness is, um, but that one can be quite helpful um, yeah. in terms of symptoms. Yeah. So any other awkwardness that you might see in their limbs changes, and you know, not just in their walking or their gait, um, but if they have other awkwardness in their movements, that can also be useful. But again, when we're talking about neurological um, symptoms, videos tend to be significantly better um, than anything we're going to be able to get from a description. Um, that being said, if, it, if it's not possible to get a video to your provider, do the best that you can to describe it. So take diligent notes so that you can describe things in as much detail as possible. Um, and then reference back to that modalities video so that you can see anything that might be contributing to worsening or um, improving the symptoms. And we're going to move on next to the head. So we're going to talk about things like sensations of emotions, headaches, vertigo, and dizziness on that video. So we'll see you guys there. <laughs> 